Welcome, Larissa. <laughs> we all just want to take a deep breath after that. I don't know how I followed that talk. Thanks, Niraj. Um, OK. Um, so the, the topic of my talk is um, going beyond being lost in trans transition and looking back at specifically the last 10 years and see what progress we have made and set the stage for the workshop um, over the next couple of days. So um, as Niraj um, so eloquently described, um, when the IOM convened in um, 2004, they came to the realization that care for cancer survivors is fragmented, um, uncoordinated. Um, survivors continue to face um, many physical and psychosocial effects. Primary care providers and oncologists are not aware of the needs of cancer survivors. And um, at the conclusion of the um, panel, um, they came up with uh, 10 recommendations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each one of the 10 recommendations and see what progress we have made, um, if any, along those 10 recommendations. So recommendation number one was that healthcare providers, patient advocates, and other stakeholders should work to raise awareness of the needs of cancer survivors, establish cancer survivorship as a distinct phase of cancer care, and to act to ensure the delivery of appropriate survivorship care. And so clearly from the lay perspective, progress has been made. Um, over the last decade, we have had walks, parks, programs, uh, dedicated to cancer survivorship, um, public officials, actors, newsmakers have been um, uh, coming out with their cancer diagnosis. And in the professional domain, we've seen the emergence of textbooks, special reports, conferences, <coughs> survivorship guidelines, and lots of survivor um, organ um, advocacy organizations. So clearly, in that regard, progress has been made. But as Niraj said, um, much of the progress has not uh, been transferred to the community settings. And even in academic settings, um, progress um, still needs to be made. So recommendation number two was that patients completing primary treatment should be provided with a comprehensive care summary and follow-up plan that is clearly and effectively explained the survivorship care plan should be written by the principal providers who coordinate an oncology treatment. This service should be reimbursed by third party payers of healthcare. Um, following the initial IOM report, the IOM convened again to look at the practical ways that these survivorship care plans can be uh, delivered. And over the years, we have found that um, Provision of survivorship care plans is still quite limited, takes a lot of effort, and is often not delivered even among the former Livestrong Centers of Excellence and many NCI designated cancer centers. There is still very limited um, evidence, however, for survivorship care plans um, and whether they can effectively um, alter uh, care for patients. Um, but um, more and more work in this area is now emerging. In response to the challenges that, uh, uh, that were found in respect to providing and um, delivering survivorship care plans, a number of toolkits have been developed by a number of, organ of organizations. And to promote the delivery of survivorship care plans, the COC has now mandated that all survivors completing their treatment be given a survivorship care plan. But one article always sticks um, in mind, which is a piece written by Craig Earle back in 2006, that it's really not just about a piece of paper, a survivorship care plan. It's about the survivorship care planning process that really counts. Recommendation number three was that healthcare providers should use systematically developed evidence-based clinical practice guidelines, assessment tools, and screening instruments to help identify and manage late effects of cancer and its treatment. Existing guidelines should be refined and new evidence-based guidelines should be developed through public and private sector efforts. 
So there's been um, lots of progress in, in this regard. So the children's oncology group has really led the field in developing originally consensus-based guidelines, but now more and more the guidelines are becoming um, evidence-based. And they're now looking into ways to harmonize international guidelines um, going forward. Um, NCCN has also uh, developed survivorship care guidelines Although um, many of the disease-based guidelines fail to fully recognize and highlight the needs of cancer survivors. Uh, the American Cancer Society has made important strides in developing survivorship care, um, care guidelines and disseminating them to primary care providers who often see cancer survivors in the community. And ASCO has been active in developing survivorship care guidelines focusing on symptoms. Cancer um, survivorship guidelines are, are also now available on mobile apps. And this is just an example from the American Cancer Society. Um, ASCO is currently developing their survivorship care plan, uh, their survivorship guidelines um, that will be accessible via apps. And other organizations have created them as well. So recommendation number four was that quality of survivorship care measures should be developed through public-private partnerships and quality assurance programs implemented by health systems to monitor and improve the care that all survivors receive. So I think that this um, recommendation is still a work in progress. While um, COPE, as part of the ASCO um, Institute for Quality, is moving forward in measuring quality. Much of the outcomes really still focus on the treatment and not so much on survivorship. So this is clearly an area that still needs um, additional work and effort. Recommendation number five was that CMS and um, National Cancer Institute, AHRQ, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs and other qualified organizations should support demonstration programs to test models of coordinated interdisciplinary survivorship care in diverse communities and across systems of care. And yes, progress has been made. Um, there are a number of studies funded by all of these organizations that are focusing on survivorship but um, studies are still lacking. Um, NCI still funds mostly basic science um, research and doesn't um, focus as much on population-based research, particularly in survivorship. Um, the CMS um, is now leading an effort focusing on the um, oncology care model. And to some extent, um, through that, um, they may, um, put more effort on defining quality metrics um, that I alluded to in the prior recommendation. So we'll see how, how that goes. And, may, and I suspect we'll hear more about that over the next day and a half. Recommendation number six was that Congress should support centers of disease control and prevention, other collaborating institutions, and the states in developing comprehensive cancer control plans that include consideration of survivorship care and promoting the implementation, evaluation, and refinement of existing state cancer control plans. So review of um, cancer um, sites, um, uh, uh, state, cancer, state cancer sites, um, what um, we actually found is that there is some mention of cancer survivorship in um, the various cancer control plans, but the variable, uh, but the outcomes reported are quite variable. There is limited reporting of progress. Um, even sitting on our own Massachusetts um, committee trying to outline what quality metrics we can measure in the state of Massachusetts, we found it quite challenging to find outcomes that were, that were clinically meaningful and were measurable and available. Um, so clearly, much more progress needs to be made in this regard as well. Um, the GW Cancer Institute has um, created some resources that will hopefully help um, state cancer plants um, come up with ways um, to do that. And it's important that we um, think globally but act locally um, and see what works in, at the state level and then look at successes made in different states and then see if we can translate those um, nationally as well. 
Recommendation number seven was that the National Cancer Institute professional associations and voluntary organizations should expand and coordinate their efforts to provide educational opportunities to healthcare providers to equip them to address the healthcare and quality of life issues facing cancer survivors. Recognizing the importance that primary care providers play in caring for cancer survivors, a new um, series was launched by the American Cancer um, Society, the National Cancer Institute, um, and the CDC focusing on cancer survivorship and created an e-learning series for primary care providers. But hearing um, presentations made by the organizers, it appears that unfortunately the uptake um, and the viewing audience for this wonderful learning series is actually quite limited, and um, particularly among primary care providers. Um, and my sense is always about the primary care providers is that they don't know what they don't know. Um, and most of the programs really still focus on the diseases that we see commonly in primary care. Um, and um, the, the sort of the field of cancer survivorship needs to continue to, to grow within um, primary care communities. Um, but again, um, the um, ASCO has also recognized the important role that collaboration and primary care has in the care of cancer survivors and launched a now a, um, an annual um, cancer survivorship workshop that brings together the oncology and the primary care communities. Um, ASCO has been active in um, releasing recommendations um, and uh, resources, toolkits for um, survivorship care, and these are all available in the survivorship compendium online. Um, likewise, ASCO has released a core curriculum for cancer survivorship education. So this is something that we all can take to our local communities and uh, disseminate it. ASCO is currently working, ASCO University is currently um, putting together a slide set that can then be used and disseminated nationwide. Recommendation number eight was that employers, legal advocates, healthcare providers, sponsors of support services and government agencies should act to eliminate discrimination and minimize adverse effects of cancer unemployment while supporting cancer survivors with short-term and long-term limitations in ability to work. So this is clearly an important issue for many um, of our cancer survivors. And these are just a few of the studies. Many, many other studies have been published that have addressed the physical, um, financial, um, implications um, on work, employment, and function among uh, cancer survivors. So there is much more work to be done in this regard. Recommendation number nine, federal and state policymakers should act to ensure that all cancer survivors have access to adequate, affordable health insurance. Insurance and payers of health care should recognize survivorship care as an essential part of cancer care and design benefits, payment policies, and reimbursement mechanisms to facilitate coverage for evidence-based aspects of care. So this was written before the um, release of the um, Affordable Care Act. And um, the Affordable Care Act certainly carries some promise um, for cancer survivors um, by focusing on preventive care, um, by allowing patients to remain on their parents' health insurance until the age of 26, by expending Medicaid, et cetera. Um, but as this review article um, that I participated in shows, um, there's actually still been very little data um, to evaluate the effect of the ACA on cancer survivorship care. There is some suggestion of benefit, um, but again, the data is quite limited. What the future of the ACA um, holds, um, who knows, um, but um, we need to focus on um, improving the outcomes for our patients. And lastly, recommendation number 10 was that all of these agencies um, have to increase their support for survivorship research and expand mechanisms for its conduct. New research initiatives focused on cancer and patient follow-up are urgently needed to guide effective survivorship care. Um, and so um, these are uh, data that, um, I'm still good. 
that, um, that were published showing that there's definitely been an increase in the number of um, studies that have been published focusing on survivorship um, research. But as you can see, much of the growth has really focused on quality of life. And while, yes, very important, um, other domains of cancer survivorship have not yet been um, fully um, focused on. Um, some research gaps have been identified, um, which is that um, we need to focus on other cancers um, um, beyond uh, breast cancer. We need to focus on older cancer survivors, on long-term cancer survivors, um, address interventions with younger cancer survivors, um, look at biological mechanisms and genetic factors relating to recurrence and adverse effects, and um, assess patterns and quality of survivorship care. So the conclusion so far is progress has been made. And while we can look back and um, uh, celebrate the progress that has been made, the journey is not over. And I think as the, you made the statement, which is we are no longer at the beginning. It's the end of the beginning. Um, and we are certainly at the end of the beginning. But there is much more, um, much more work to be done. Um, in the last um, 10 years, the number of cancer survivors has continued to grow. And so we will need to continue to figure out ways to take care of them and their needs. The number of cancer survivors living long term continues to grow. And therefore, they have other medical conditions that require treatment, not only the late effects of their treatment, but basic conditions that we all get um, as members of society, unfortunately, hypertension, diabetes, among others. And the age of our survivors continues to grow. Um, and unfortunately, um, many of our um, survivors, like Niraj, um, continue to experience uh, late and long-term effects of their treatment and continue to need coordinated care. And of course, there are others like Ellen Stovall, um, who has unfortunately passed as a result of her late effects. So we have to recognize that the um, successes that we have shared over the last 10 years um, I still um, need to um, take our survivors into, into account. So what will the next decade bring? Um, we need to continue to reduce suffering and mortality among our survivors and promote return to life, to work, to school. We need to test models of care delivery and risk stratification approaches that take into account the whole person, not just how their cancer fits into their follow-up needs, but how the rest of their health conditions and social conditions affect their needs. We have to enhance the education of survivors and all providers, not just primary care providers, not oncology providers, but the cardiologist, the gastroenterologist, the dentists, the audiologist about the needs of cancer survivors. And we need to provide survivorship care that is accessible, affordable, and equitable. So I look forward to the next um, day and a half, and hopefully when we end tomorrow, we will have some answers um, and some goals for the decade ahead. Thank you.